It's New Brew Thursday! Woo! Wow. And we're doing <laughs> Sink the Bismarck. Sink the Bismarck. Hello. And who is this? Yeah, who are you? Oh, no, just some random. I think dude. this is Luke Nicholas. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Oh wait, no, you just look like Luke Nicholas wearing that yeah. nice shirt. It's like, so. like a David. To <laughs> me. I think we no, we fought over a few hand strays, but we're not far off it. <laughs> this is this is the New Brew Thursday Mule. Yeah, David, you bring us beer. I a do. Lot. I do. I From yeah. amazing breweries in New Zealand. I am somewhat the unofficial mule employee. So, <laughs> moving beer around, yeah. which is just sort of you know evolved and sort of now, awesome. Yeah. Why why is it that you were constantly going from Australia to New Zealand to oh, I'm very LA. fortunate to be in a position where I'm paid to do that. Paid to do that. As a pilot. All right. So I Sorry, how's it going? Again? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I I'll, I'll just fly with a joystick, mate. Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, <laughs> his little laptop. It's Microsoft Flight Simulator with no USB connection to the plane. <laughs> Unless you're <laughs> flying two planes at the same time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like, hold on, I'm, I'm just landing the plane in New York right now. <laughs> okay, we're done with that one. That's right. Book off. <laughs> okay, let me tell you how it all started. Mm -hmm. Okay, quick story. I'll get serious just for a couple of minutes if you can right. give me the time. Maybe. Maybe. Last year, February, um, at a, a one of at the time one of two craft beer pubs that were in Sydney, mm -hmm. city of three and a half million people with two craft beer pubs. That's a different story. Anyway, they had a festival on that was about popped up beers, and I got to try this beer from the epic brewery called Armageddon, and I mm. went, that is freaking amazing. Yeah, yes it is. And I didn't. That was so. I was at the festival. I never had it again. I couldn't find it anywhere else in Australia. About six months later, I was doing a trip through Auckland, New Zealand. And just by absolute chance, someone in Australia was following on Twitter, did a Friday follow. And one of the Friday followers was at Epic Beer. Mm. So I thought, oh, I'm going to Auckland tomorrow. I want to try some of that beer again. So I sent a message to whoever was at Epic Beer, not knowing too much about it, mm -hmm. and said, I'm going to be in Auckland tomorrow. Whereabouts can I go and what bar can I go to to buy your beer? And he and responded, which just turned out to be Luke Nicholas, who's Epic. Mm -hmm. And... He said, I'm going to be at... Luke Nicholas is epic. He yeah. is epic, yes, literally. L literally, yeah. And he said, I'm going to be at our Carol's pub um, on Friday night, having a few beers. If you're around, come down, I'll buy you a beer. So I did. I went down. Met Luke. Had a great time. Hit it off. You know, he had his wife there at the time and a friend from New Zealand who owns a bar and we had a few beers. And Anyway, we went our separate ways. But I said before I left, I'm going to, to Los Angeles. I'll bring back some beers. Why don't we sit down and drink it when we get back? And he said, that'd be awesome because... He likes the American style of beers, and mm. as you, you don't would. we all? Yeah, as you would. Yeah. So America, craft <laughs> beer. Came back, <laughs> bought some beers, sat down, had a great time in the afternoon. Anyway, a few weeks later, I'm doing the same trip again up through, and he said, "Look, you need to get hold of New Brew Thursday." I thought, "Oh yeah, okay, cool." So he gave me good advice for anybody, by the way. <laughs> yeah, get a hold of us. That's get right. Yeah, us. Absolutely. <laughs> Bring us beer. <laughs> it worked for me. And anyway, so I, I got hold of Stephen through that, and Luke gave me some some beer to bring up, and so we came up, and I think it was at Beechwood Barbecue, Beechwood where barbecue. we first met, and um, I, you know, that was great and lots of stuff, and then we moved up, and I went up to New York, and you put me on to Lee at Hoptopia, so I got the contact up there, then I came back, and. Um, we went out again, you said I'll take some of these beers home, so I did. Went back with the beers, had another session with Luke, and then this just progressed over the time. So then the next trip, it got just a little bit funky. Because I said to you I wanted to go to Russian River. Right. Oh, that trip. Yeah. So we went to Russian River. Woo! We went to Russian River. <laughs> and you introduced me to some person called the Beer Wench. The Beer Wench, uh, yes. yeah. Nice. Yeah. And <laughs> she didn't quite live up to a hype, but anyway. That's, 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 <laughs> oh, that's called out again. Yeah. yeah. Called out Sick again. Burn, dude. So we went up there and we had a good time and that oh, was yeah. just great to go up there to Russian River and then we came down and we talked about going down to San Diego. Right. So then it just got even more random. Yeah. And I was you took me to some bars down there and I ended up in a brewery. You know, this place I don't know called. Oh, Lost, Lost Abbey, Lost yeah. Abbey. That's right. And I was doing blending of beers in my mouth with just some random individual. Yeah. Now <laughs> bear in mind, because this statement has been made on Twitter several times, they weren't blending each beer from their mouths into the other guy's mouth. That was not happening. Dude, I never thought about that. I'm never gonna tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> they were simply blending two different beers in their own mouths. Mouth, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Which is quite an art form, I might add, how you actually juggle it anyway. You just gotta kind of hold it under your tongue, and then you know, let yeah. the beer come over this side, and then they just expert. Yeah. Mouthblendery.com. So, I see it as a domain name Mouth. soon. <laughs> oh 
that's so that then that's basically how it all started. You know, here we are now on the flight strip. Exactly. I've just met Greg and, Greg and Tim from Untap, which is great, and it just keeps getting bigger and expanding yeah. and bigger. And you know, I love you guys so much, and try and bring up as much uh-huh. beer as I can. And um, I'm in a position where I can bring up a fair bit of beer. And um, you guys enjoy so it. Thank you, Follow Friday. It. Thank you, Follow Friday. Exactly. <laughs> Follow Friday so, works. Yeah. Now, the reason that we're in, we're doing Sink to Bismarck, this beer's been out for a while. It's It had a massive amount of hype when it came out. It had a whole ton of controversy around it, whether it's a beer, if it's not a beer, what the hell are they thinking, what are they doing? But Dave is probably one of the most hardcore freaking people I've ever drank with in my entire life. Yeah, so seriously. you have to, if I'm going to do a show, the first show with Dave that I'm going to do is going to be the most hardcore beer I can find. I'm just normal in Australia. Yeah. So, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Australia's motto is what? Harden the fuck up? Exactly. <laughs> so. The whole, the whole, the whole country. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I get to hear that from Dave at like three in the morning when I'm like ready to pass. Harden the fuck up. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's keep going. <laughs> so, so we're going to do Sink the Bismarck, and I'm going to go ahead and pop it, and while I do that... Um, you going to unwrap it first? You don't undress a woman. Ooh. Before no. you take her top <laughs> off. Before you take her top off. Oh. All right, yeah, I, I will I, unwrap it first. I think you do undress a woman before think, you consume them. I think you... Ooh. Oh. 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 Well, this is why you should get your craft beer this <laughs> advice man from us time. and not your love advice. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, I don't know if that was pretty good advice. <laughs> 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 Hang on, before you... You're going to talk oh, about this? Oh, it's taped. Well, that's yeah. a stopper. That's a stopper. Now, generally, if like if I'm by myself and I have this bottle, and I crack it open, that's probably kind of sad just by itself. <laughs> you know, this is not a beer to drink by yourself. Not this at is all. A, this is a beer that you want to enjoy with other people. Yeah. Um, but if for some reason, you know, despite your your ability, you are not able to enjoy this with people, it does come with its own stopper, so you can actually pour a shot or two and then. It, I think you can even age it with this thing on there. Really? Right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I've uh, used these. You can just pull it out of the bag, by the way. Um, I've it's used taped. these. No, you you can just pull it out of the bag. It's taped. taped. Um, but I've used these on regular bottles of beer, and they've lasted for huh? a few oh. days. So you can use it for regular beers. They're actually pretty, and they're only like a book now. But yeah, it comes with a stopper. When Tactical Nuclear Penguin came out, um, no they stopper. Didn't, they didn't have a stopper, and. It only made sense to include one with the bottles because it's almost like once you've opened it, you're committed to it. So I'm going to pop this open. Um, John, you remember the controversy behind all this, right? Uh, the, the controversy most part. with the... Oh, 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 oh. Now, when you, this happens with Sink the Bismarck, you do lick it because... <laughs> the whole story behind this is, right, I I'll guess... I'll be pouring my beer yeah. now. <laughs> nice. I got, they came out with Tactical Nuclear Penguin, and there's this. They, I don't know if they necessarily started this whole race for the highest ABV beer, but um, they got in the mix with this German brewer. They went who, after them, I think, didn't they? I think that was the. Well, I think I the German if, brewer went after Brewdog. Is kind of really. Well, how it went TNP down. came out, and then the German brewer oh, came oh, out with a beer drop. that was slightly bigger. <laughs> from disgusting. what I remember, mm-hmm. attention whore. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, Basically, they went back and forth, and uh, the the last beer that Beer Dog came out with, that's this part of this war, was the end of history, which is like a 55%. Yeah. And that same German, German brewer came out with like a 60% or something, I think, after that. So, right. Where does it end? Yeah. I think the key, though, for me is that when... Is it a good... It, it, I'm sorry. Right, go ahead. It's, it's all a matter of whether or not it's good, you know, yeah. in my opinion. So. I think the, the key for me, though, is that I, like... Everybody kept saying, like, oh, they're battling it out, and this one's doing this in response to that. No. I'm done, <laughs> done licking things now. So, um, But it's like, you can't brew these beers in a week and a half. Yeah. No. Like, you had to have been planning this beer before this other brewery came out with their beer. And so, it, I, I think it was more coincidence, and maybe some tactical foreknowledge. My Bismarck has been sunk. Yeah. Nice. Um, but oh, these beers, strong. I mean... <clears throat> Sink the Bismarck is an amazing beer, mm-hmm. well, despite we? what the haters say. So we're gonna cheers this. Even though some people just jump ahead. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah. yeah, Brad does that sometimes. That's why we love him. Mm, it's got a nice color. Definitely a good aroma. Well, I don't get the same kind of intense brininess that you get off the tactical, but I well, certainly. I compare this beer to like that aftertaste heat. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, mm. I compare this beer to like. Dark chocolate, covered almonds, dipped in sea salt, dipped in like liquid hops. 
dipped in liquid That's kind of gold. my description. description of how this beer tastes. And look, look at, at the you. carbonation That's on this literally. thing, man. Yeah. Like, I don't know if, you, if I can get it with this. It's amazing looking at that. It's yeah. just like... It's going off. Yeah, it's like never-ending carbonation. It's happy. It's a happy beer. Mm. Alright, we're checking in. Yeah. So I'll do it. I jumped the boat on that already. Uh, I've already this is a in. beer you definitely want to check and untap with because you may yeah. not ever have it again. Now, so, generally, and, and I'm going to throw this out there because we ran into this problem recently. Um, if you have a local liquor store or whatever that has this beer, they may decide that they want to charge you like $200 for a bottle of this. Don't pay that. Right. Just don't. I mean, there is. it's going to be an elevated price because there is some hype right. and some markup. And a little bit of markup, if you're willing to pay the markup and for the convenience. to forego waiting to get right. it from BrewDog, then fine. But you can get it at BrewDog's website. I mean, they sell it. And, you know, it's not that you're doing anything illegal. They're, they stay on the customs form where right. it is. and Exactly. They so ship it directly to you. It's like $60 a bottle um, plus the shipping. And if you buy a few extra of, like, their other random beers that are not as expensive, you can really dip that shipping right. into a it's, reasonable level. You get, it's a flat rate shipping price. So I don't know how many you could order <laughs> before they say, okay, you got to pay more, more shipping. shipping. But, you know, if you order a 12-pack of beer and this is part of the 12-pack, your shipping cost is down to like five bucks a beer, right? You know, and it's it's really well worth it. So am I correct in saying because I wasn't aware they're still continuing to produce this and brew it? Yeah, yeah. Um, we just ordered. Uh, we recently ordered a Cinque de Bismarck and a TMP. Right. Okay. So while we enjoy this immense, it's incredible immense. beer, it's yeah, nice. mm -hmm. um, we're gonna go off and send you off to a master pairings, which will probably have a lighter version of a beer. Mm. <laughs> Perhaps. 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 Maybe By the time stronger. you get back, we'll be trashed. So <laughs> enjoy. I'll yeah. be dancing naked on this table right here. Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairings with me, Dr. Bill, and today I've got Brad Kohlenberg. The one and only. So uh, today, Brad, <laughs> I thought I'd uh, serve you a little breakfast. Thank you, I just woke up. I um, appreciate that. It's 12.30, sir. What can I um, say? It's Saturday. Anyways, <laughs> let's talk about the beer first. We have a Hefeweizen. As you may remember from the episode I did with Steven a while back, one of the most versatile beers there is as far as pairings, right along with the uh, Belgian Saison. And this beer I've paired with omelets, yogurt with fruit, great cheeses, all kinds of foods, salads, you name it, seafood, it's amazing. But today we're gonna take this Spaten Francis Connor Hefeweizen, mm -hmm. which means it still has the brewer's yeast in the bottle, and we are going to pair it with banana pancakes. Amazing. Yeah. So what means it still has the yeast in the bottle? Uh, well, Hefeweizens are made like that. Okay. Uh, Hefe means yeast. Weizen right. means wheat. Um, and so it still has the yeast in the bottom. That's the way you pour it. There are a couple different methods to pouring it. Normally, you would take the beer, open it, turn it at a 45 degree angle, pour it till it's three quarters full, and then tip the bottle into the middle. Also, you might want to agitate it and roll the bottle prior to doing that. Let me pour both a All couple right, different yeah. methods and show. Cool. So one of the classic methods is taking the beer, pouring it in the glass like this, and just bring it along. You can see how these glasses promote a vigorous head. Right. Now this beer actually is at room temperature, so it's definitely just aggressive and huge. Look at that. I mean, that's right. insane. Yeah. I, I've never poured a Hefeweizen like that. Wow. So anyways, that's not necessarily what the reaction you'd like to see from this. Um, so let's try another method and so, see how it holds up. Wow, we got half of the beer in the glass. That's it's, great, uh, Bill. What should we talk about for uh, 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> it's not 20 minutes. It's been a while minutes. since I've been on a master pair. Now, you could, I don't know I, why. Now, I've before poured it like this, where I've inverted it and just tipped oh. it and done it, which is kind of fun. Yeah. But we're going to see if we can gently do this correctly. Okay. I didn't realize it was that warm. Oh, yeah. Just, as soon as it... There you go. So apparently you pour a room temperature Hefeweizen at a much slower rate of speed. You can go ahead and pour some more in there. Bring it on up. When you get about an inch left in the bottle, it's good to agitate it. There's a couple methods for agitation. Classically, this is a method. Mm -hmm. I've also seen it done where 
Let me just roll it or something. The bottle is spun around like this. At a bar. Right. But basically all you're doing is getting that yeast that's probably caked on the bottom and you're pouring it down the middle and so it adds a nice cloudiness to the beer. Yeah, you still have a little yeah. more in there. <laughs> so, I'd wait a minute. Sorry about that. Like I said, That's, I didn't realize they were yeah. that warm. Hefeweizens are amazing. Yeah, I think I you can like tip that. They don't get a lot that. of play in the craft beer community. Well, first of all, they're German beer, mm -hmm. and so yeah, I've seen these. I mean, you can find these at Vons. Like these are pretty yeah. ubiquitous beers. Yeah. Well, Spaten's uh, one of the classic Munich breweries. So, cheers. Cheers. Great nose of clove. Banana and bubblegum. Mm. And the banana is going to play really well right with this. Oh, yeah. Again, it's one of those things I would have never said bubblegum, but as soon as you say it, I'm like, ah, that is definitely bubblegum. Now, these are big pancakes that I made, so we're going to treat it like a pie slightly. Sounds good. Look at the beautiful layering on that. It's really unique. A lot of people don't understand the concept that you can have great breakfast foods with beer. Yeah, usually when you say breakfast beer to people, they think you're <laughs> an alcoholic and joking. This is a classic. Like, I'm an alcoholic and I'm serious. This is, <laughs> good Brad. This is a classic comparison mm -hmm. where they complement each other. The banana and the, not only do the pancakes just work deliciously, but the banana comes into play and it's just, oh my God, it's just amazing. I need a little more syrup, so I'm going in like that. But the sweetness from the pancake and the banana and the syrup oh, plays yeah. really well with the banana and the clove of the Hefeweizen. Yeah, it, it, everything else gets more pronounced. There's some definitely some slight tartness uh, originally from the Hefeweizen from the wheat, mm -hmm. but because all German Hefeweizens, by law, because the Germans are very strict that way, has to have at least 50 to 51% wheat in their beer. Oh, wow. It's a beautiful beer, it looks beautiful. Nice and cloudy, great flavor. So how do you, you, you like it with the pear? Yes, yes. You can take, um, you can do other things with uh, pancakes if you have fruit on them. You mm -hmm. can definitely do fruit beers with them, but I prefer the Hefeweizen because it has that, that like I said, that classic banana taste anyways. Would you pair fruit with a Hefeweizen ever? Oh, sure. Yeah. Seems like it would be In an earlier episode that I did, I paired, a, uh, I think it was strawberry yogurt mm -hmm. with uh, organic strawberry yogurt with uh, maybe blueberries or blackberries and maybe some strawberries in it. And it paired deliciously. Yeah, it goes really yeah, well. There yeah. you go. There's classic. Just get it in there and get that all that sediment. And all of a sudden, your glass just became way cloudier. And look how it develops over time. Look how it dissipates and it's just oh, yeah. constantly just beating opaque. and coming. And just cloudy. And just lovely. And all that does, the yeast in the bottom, it imparts much more characteristics of the beer, more mm. flavor. Yeah. And it breaks it out. So it has more body. Well, I'm glad you came and had some pancakes this morning. Yeah, as always. Cheers. Thanks Cheers. for coming to another Master Pairings. Boom. What's the smell I'm getting off of this? Hops and Ooh. alcohol. <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> it's got a boozy, hoppy aroma to it. I must admit, like, up until right now, the strongest beer I have ever drunk before was 70%. Mm -hmm. So I've just taken a huge step. Yeah. I don't get that alcohol taste either on the nose or in the mouth. The alcohol arrives. As an aftertaste mm -hmm. in the throat. Yeah, if you feel yeah. it going down. Right, it's you know, very it's warming. Like, like a whiskey, yeah. if you it is. a shot of, or a sip Whereas of whiskey. You, you know? think about some of the barely brewed stronger beers, you get that alcohol immediately in your mouth. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. This you don't. Well, I think um, James and Brewdog as a whole have the same kind of uh, issue that you do in Australia with the low ABV yeah. beers. And they have the camera and they have like, a lot of their legislation is demanding lower ABV beers. And so Brewdog, being the punk kind of spirit that they have, throws their middle finger up that, and this is what they brew. Yeah. You know, it's like they want a 5% beer, well, then I'm going to give you a 45% beer, you know? <laughs> 41, yeah. but you know. 
The, uh, They're really, really leading the revolution in Europe for, you know, craft beer, I think. Yeah. Mm. Well, and I, historically, the UK, you know, certainly Scotland and stuff, their craft beer scene is nowhere near as advanced as what you guys have over here. Right. right. S substantially, it's just not even close. Yeah. Um, so they are pushing boundaries over there and they're having to teach people different ways of drinking beer because it, traditionally, in, from what my time to visiting the UK and England was, is it was old world ale initially. Mm. And then that got taken over by the new world lagers, you know, the, right. the, the conglomerates. And that sort of owns the market still over there. But someone like these guys are coming in, they're having to, to readjust and train people. Yeah, and I think that they, um, that's why they're doing these really over-the-top beers that they do. Because, I mean, even their, like, more regular beers, like Paradox, Aloveron, huge, mm. huge bourbon notes, big alcohol, Tokyo, big alcohol. Um, a lot of their beers are just there. big and in your face and just whatever, and... Um, I know when TMP especially came out and then Sink the Bismarck kind of, again, so many people were like, oh, it's just a, it's a marketing ploy and it's a stunt and it, it hurts craft beer and it does you can't this. say that. And, and in my opinion, I think it does great things for craft beer because it says straight out and simple, this is still beer. This is a brewed product. Yep. It's not a distilled product. It's a brewed product. Even though it's been frozen and it's considered kind of maybe an Icebox IPA. Was this one? I'm not sure if this one was frozen or if they went through the same process as the penguin. Yeah, no, this was frozen. But, hmm. um, Twice um, at least, I think. Yeah, but they they're brewing this product. They're they're showing you where the, where the limits are for for craft beer, and then they're breaking them with the next beer that they do. Yeah. But I think it's given them a great example because it's given them the challenge to be able to go out and say, oh, I want to do this and I want to brew it. Mm -hmm. But what it's also given them is it's given them great marketing. Right. right? So it's worked both ways for them. So right. yes, it is a marketing tool, right? But they're doing right. it because but it's not they a want point. the challenge. It, yeah, it's not like they're like, oh, hey, let's brew this like immensely undrinkable beer yeah. and we'll just do it because it's marketing. This is a very drinkable beer. Absolutely. And TMP also extremely drinkable, especially if you're drinking it with James. That's a whole different experience, <laughs> yeah. you know? And But I mean, it, both of those beers have amazing qualities in them. And so I would never sit and go back and go, oh, this is just a, a marketing ploy beer. It does. It, they didn't intend it to taste good. They intended this to taste amazing, yeah. and they hit that mark. One thing I saw yeah, on here, it said is it's, uh, oh, you're right about the freezing thing, but they call it uh, freeze hopping. They freeze hop hopped it. it. Mm. I wonder, like, I don't know. What if the hops so, were frozen? <laughs> like, did they put hops in and then freeze it with the hops in there? Or something? I don't know. Well, hops added after the freezing. Again. Freeze yeah. hopped. Maybe the, yeah. I don't know what that is. You it's better get James back on. Wrapped lovingly, yeah, 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 yeah. wrapped lovingly in hops. So, I will say also, um, when I drink this, I get like a, do you get like a saltiness? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. On it? Like it's right like the front? sea salt, yeah. That's crazy. It's it's just like a, you're swigging the ocean water at right. first. But That's why I say it's like, it's like that, you get that dark chocolatey kind of almost, uh, mm. With the, the salt, dip salt, sea salt, salt. yeah, the sea salt chocolate with like a little bit of a nuttiness for the almond, and then you just take all that and dip it into a liquid hop, and that's this beer. Yeah, I think and I was expecting more saltiness after having some of the other brew dogs, because he was like yeah. super in the brine, and I was right. just like kind of really well, like the that. Atlantic IPA is yeah. literally like almost licking a, a, yeah. a salt lick. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's so salty. And even the tactical is, I think, brandier mm -hmm. than this. I think that the the TMP was frozen in an ice cream parlor, right? They used an ice cream freezer. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. Yeah. 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 Um, whereas this was probably just done <laughs> in their own if James freezer. is his real name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is it James? Is it really? Well, you can watch the Attack on the Zero Finger video that they made for it. Yeah, yeah. and they do make, uh, uh, they the, make amazing the videos. The Sink the Bismarck video yeah. is one of the best beer videos I've ever watched. If yeah. you haven't seen it, you know, search it out. I think it's certainly on YouTube, Vimeo, all the usual suspects. The, video is, the yeah. video is cool, but James and Martin are such characters. Well, like, they do a good job of being, like, subtly funny. And they're like smart and witty. Yeah. You know? Right. And it, it just and then the video, the production on the video is just really cool yeah. and kind of raw looking and I don't mm. know, got the whole you know cut right. pictures out thing and. Well, the TMP one has you know, penguins taking it up to poot shoot. So how can you not like that? It does. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the outtakes. Um, I'm sure you could not oh, like yeah. that. Sure. <laughs> Peter doesn't <laughs> like that. 
How can you not like penguins taking like up that? poop shoots? <laughs> hey. So, um, Dave? I'm surprised how drinkable that is. Ooh. Yeah. And it's just warming it's, my throat. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised how warm it is. It's very it's drinkable, but just, I mean, completely hot. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. But it's not just... It's, uh, it's, the best, it's the best bourbon you'll ever have in your life. <laughs> Is really what it boils down to for bourbon. me. Well, bourbon whiskey kind of thing, because it's it's got the it's like a you can just drink whiskey. it, yeah, and yet it has that. Warm... But it's yeah, because for me when I drink whiskey, it's like as fast as possible, just yeah. And with this, it's, it's like I want to savor the flavor, but it's still I still get that same warming and that same like I love you feeling inside. Yeah. <laughs> so I love you. I'm just reading the bottom of the label, which says IPA for the dedicated. So yeah. Does that mean we're now all dedicated? Uh-huh. We're all dedicated, yes. The dedicated. Yes. Yeah. I think that uh, TMP bottle says something similar. It says beer for the dedicated or something right. like that. Ooh. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm trying trying to to I haven't had the TMP. Mouth. So. Oh. Did we just stop? What's happening? No, we're just no, Brad, a... Brad's, Brad's holding some in his mouth. Yeah. So I'm, I'm seeing what happens. He's completely this. destroying his palate at this point. <laughs> well, like you would expect, like a Listerine effect, but it's not. It's just like oh, you're, right. you're really kind of you get the warmth on the tongue. Finally, yeah, I want to try it. But yeah, it's just kind of like savoring the flavor. Excellent. Mm. Oh. Good. Yeah. yeah, the saltiness comes out a lot in the, towards the end. Mm-hmm. If you leave it on yeah, your tongue, yeah, the saltiness really. I wonder starts what to come that out. saltiness is from. Is that the hops? Like, does it get some sort of byproduct from the hop they're doing that or it's just bizarre how salty tasting it is yeah. well, i think they could fix any dedicated well, beer drinkers sore throat <laughs> <laughs> exactly Dang. it'll exactly. definitely numb it up for you yep. yeah it's great for when you got a cold <laughs> so. <laughs> so. well i'm out of beer so yeah. as always dave thank you very much and thanks, thanks for having thanks me so i'm gonna hug you dave. awkwardly later thanks to right. Luke at epic absolutely yep. thanks to brew dog for brewing amazingness and as always stay safe, stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe.